difficulties associated with articles of religion among particular Baptists by David Clark narrated by David Clark introduction articles of religion or confessions of faith are used to inform others of what a person a church or society believe with respect to religion and practice some churches restrict membership to those who will subscribe to their articles of religion one of the problems that this brings is that there comes a time when a new believer cannot in conscience subscribe to a tenet of belief that they don't understand it may be the article is badly worded or poorly written or may in fact be an error in which case a new believer could not in conscience subscribe to something they do not understand this did not happen in the early days of the christian church as there was apostolic authority to settle matters of religious beliefs those who were added to the church were such as should be saved and they did not have to subscribe to a written confession of faith that we are about to look at in a moment even the apostles were growing in knowledge of the lord jesus christ just as we do today peter is an example of an apostle who was in error whom paul had to withstand to the face over matters of doctrine and practice it is the view of the author that articles of religion are necessary due to the vast differences of beliefs held by all manner of those professing christianity it is most reasonable if not essential that believers should see eye to eye when working together in the cause of god and truth however a real problem occurs when a new believer having no religious cultural background is required to subscribe to articles of religion that were prepared by men a hundred or two hundred years ago the problem being that by very nature such articles of religion are held in dispute by some it is for this reason that the author argues that it is unreasonable to expect a new believer to subscribe to a set of religious tenets without being able to give a reasonable account of so doing of the many sets of articles of religion there are a range of differences some are in error and the teaching is not according to the scripture it is wrong and unreasonable to expect a new believer to subscribe to such religious tenets if they are unable to comprehend the issues surrounding them being penned and what should they do when at a latter time come to realize they cannot subscribe to them so what should they do a real problem occurs when a person of a second or third generation descendant of a particular church group or denomination and they become a believer the problem comes when that believer is required to subscribe to tenets of religion written in unclear terms and when the original framer of the articles cannot be questioned or when the current generation of christians are unable to explain their meaning or when doing so do so in error it would appear that when this happens and tradition takes a lead in such matters rather than truth taught in the scriptures that error occurs opening up the way for the veneration of ancient articles of religion and not the scriptures themselves which the author suggests is a form of idolatry it is the testimony of this author that when he was converted from crime to christ on the 16th of january 1970 and he was not connected with any church and had no real knowledge of the bible he was virtually illiterate and was directed by other christians to an assemblies of god pentecostal church in aylesbury he learned to read by reading the bible and classical christian literature and soon realized that the doctrines of grace were those truths taught in the bible but not taught or believed in the assemblies of god pentecostal church or other churches in Aylesbury. In 1976, on the 8th of January, he was received as a member of the Beard and Strict and Particular Baptists, a church that was founded in 1831. It was here he gave an account of his call by grace and conversion and was received into membership of the Beard and Church. An account of this is told in the book Beard and Strict and Particular Baptists, chapter 16, I joined the church. Becoming a member was not without its difficulty. 
as the articles of religion that were presented to him were not the same as those set out in the trustee of the church formed in 1831. The articles presented to him contained two articles he could not subscribe to, as they went beyond scripture. Help was sought from Mr Hill, one of our supply preachers and a gospel standard minister from Luton, Ebenezer. The matter was resolved and it was agreed that those articles of religion found in the trust deed were those to be agreed upon and that the spurious articles should be ignored. This matter was recorded in the chapter previously mentioned in the author's book, Be It Restricted Particular Baptists. The Beaton Church became a gospel standard cause on the 16th of January 1981 and this brought further difficulties within and without the church. These difficulties from those who were either opposed to the gospel standard articles of religion or those who had no idea of the historic need to define certain doctrines. In 1982 the author was called by the Lord and sent by the church to preach the gospel. Within the next two years, he preached in many gospel standard causes throughout the country. During this time, it was recognised there was a need clearly to set out the doctrines of grace and a need to rightly divide the word of truth. It was soon realised the Burton Church had slipped into error and did not wish to correct the error. They continued to allow general redemption hymns to be taught and sung in a mixed congregation and by children along with their unconverted parents. Not only so, but other issues arose regarding duty faith and duty repentance and the law of Moses being the rule of life and conduct for the believer rather than the gospel. These were issues that opposed our articles of religion as expressed in the gospel standard articles of faith, which the church had recently subscribed to when the church became a gospel standard listed cause. There were other matters that arose relating to the chapel building. It was believed the chapel building was the house of God and the communion table was a holy table. The sad thing was that there appeared to be no one able to come alongside and help resolve these difficulties. The long-standing church members had uneducated views of gospel truths and were governed by long-standing traditions that denied the gospel of Christ. These errors are written about in the author's book, The Beaton Crisis, that was written in 1984. After his secession from the church due to the reasons mentioned, with a view to help any who were serious in their pursuit of gospel truth and the cause of Christ. It is due to the author's experience of articles of religion and certain practices in the particular Baptist churches that he wishes to introduce the reader to five sets of particular Baptist articles of religion, all of which hold to an historic view of eschatology, meaning the second coming of Christ, the parousia, resurrection and last judgment is in our current day future. It is the author's wish to encourage and revisit the traditional historic understanding of eschatology among those of the reformed faith and consider a fulfilled view. An example as expressed in item 5 of Beaton Particular Baptist proposed for Pakistan in 2016. Our soteriology is of the reformed tradition and to help in this consideration we will review Ed Stevens book What Happened in AD 70. The five articles of religion sets are one the first London Particular Baptist, second edition, 1646. Two, the London Baptist Confession, 1689. Three, the Beaton Society of Particular Baptist, 1831. Four, the Gospel Standard Articles, 1878. And finally, a proposed set, the Beaton Particular Baptist for Pakistan, 2007. Compiled by the author.